Okay, how you doing? I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to customize the toolbars in Reaper. Now the toolbar is right up here, but it could be completely customized. This is the default, and one of the ways you can customize it is removing some of them. For instance, the ones over here, this one creates a new project. You could open a project, save a project, but most of those things appear in the menu right here. So we don't really need them. But I do kind of like the ones over here, the later ones, like this one, which shows and hides the grid, or turns on snapping or locking. These ones give a visual representation of what state you're in, either on or off. So I like to keep these visible. But let's say I wanted to delete some of the earlier ones. You go right here and right click, and here's our toolbar options. We can customize the toolbar, and right here are the toolbar buttons. Each one of these lines represents what we're seeing over here, and we see it over here as well. So let's remove new project, open project, save project, project settings, undo, and redo. And then if we save and close that, you see the toolbar changed. There's fewer items there. So now if we wanted to, we could add new items that we prefer. For instance, let's add one for quantizing items. So let's right click over here, customize toolbar, and let's add one right here. And when you choose add, it opens up your actions. So every action in Reaper could have its own toolbar button. So let's type in the filter, quantize. And there's an action right here to quantize items to the grid. Let's double click that, and it shows up down here. It also shows up over here. Now we can change the way the button looks by choosing the icon and change the icon. There's a whole bunch of icons to choose from. But let's choose this one right here, and then close it, and now it looks like this. So if we save it and close it, it shows up right over here. So now we can quantize media items just by hitting this button. So let's split a few, and let's select them all, and hit this. And that opens up this dialog where we can quantize things. 16th notes, 8th notes, quarter notes, and all the other options that are available. But let's quantize these to 16th notes. Process it, and they all shifted to the nearest 16th note. That's a bit quicker than searching in actions to find quantize. So have a dedicated button just for that function. So let's undo all that, and let's create another button for splitting items. We'll right click again, customize the toolbar, hit add, and we'll type in split. And we get split items at the play cursor. We'll select and close that. Now we could give it a custom button, but instead we can make a text button and type in split. And that creates a toolbar button that looks like this with the word split in it. Hit save and close. So now we can put our cursor in a section we want to split, go to the toolbar and hit it, and it's going to split it right there. Now you're probably wondering, how is that better than using the keystroke? Well, really it's not. Let's undo that. It's a lot quicker just to hit S. But by making a toolbar, we could use this other feature called the Smart Tool. Let's undo all this. If we right-click this toolbar, it lights up like this. So now our cursor changes. See how it changes to an A? Now we can just click any way we want, and it's going to perform that function. So we can click it, and it's going to automatically split right where we selected. Right here, right here. So with one click, we can split our items. That's the benefit of adding it to our toolbars. And then just click it again, and it's not a smart tool anymore. Now we're happy with this toolbar, we can save it. 
Go over here and export it. Export current toolbar. Give it a name and save it. And we can also revert back to the default. Reset right here. Reset current toolbar to default. And it all goes back. Save it, close it, and we're back to the default. Now we can have more than one toolbar. If we right click over here, we could switch our toolbar to a bunch of custom ones. Now by default, there's nothing in these. If we hit this one, there's just a button telling us to edit it. There's nothing in here. Toolbar two. And there's 16 of these, along with a bunch of mini ones. But we can create our own custom toolbar right here. Let's go back to the main toolbar. And instead, let's open those custom toolbars. And if we open it from here, they open in their own floating window. So let's create our own custom toolbar. We'll hit this button for editing. Then we could delete this button. And let's add a bunch of actions. Let's say we want to create a toolbar for selecting takes. Let's hit add, go to the action filter, and type in set take active. Right down here, there's a bunch of actions for selecting our takes. Let's choose one through eight, one for eight, and seven, six, and so on. I'm going to close it. Now we have a different button for each take choice. Let's rename these just their number. We'll use text icons and name this one and two and so on. So now we have a different button for every take choice. So let's save this, close it, and here's our toolbar. Now the buttons are kind of small, so we could choose a preference to make them bigger. Go to our preferences, go to appearance, and uncheck this option, which will allow the buttons to get larger than one to one. So now if we make this bigger, they get bigger. Let's go about this size though. So now each one of these buttons is going to select takes. Each one of these items has eight takes. So if we choose this one and switch it to two, we're here in take two, three, and so on. Now you're probably wondering, why not just use a keystroke? If you hit T, it'll switch to the next take, but you have to do it in sequential order. Let's say on this one, you want to quickly jump to take seven. We could do that with the button. Or this one, we want to jump to take four and compare it to take eight. We can quickly jump back and forth using our toolbar. It's pretty handy. Now this toolbar doesn't have to float. We could right click it and put it where the main toolbar goes. So it's now over here. Or we could put this back open it back up again, and put it on a docker. There's a toolbar docker right over here. So if we choose this one, we could drag this to the left, and it shows up over here. Or to the top, and it shows up up here. The bottom shows up down here, or the right side and it shows up over here. So it's pretty flexible. And if we drag it back to the middle, it's a floating toolbar again. Let's create another toolbar. Let's switch it here to toolbar two. And again, there's nothing here. So we'll create a new one. And this time, we're gonna create one for our grid. So we'll delete this one. Add, and in our filter, we'll type in grid set to. From here, we can create buttons to reset our grid to certain values, like whole notes, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, 
and 16th notes. And what I'd also like to do is add in the option to show the grid, toggle the grid lines, and also turn on snapping. Right here, toggle snapping. We'll select and close it. Let's put snapping at the end. And let's put these in order. So now we create a custom toolbar just for setting up our grid. We'll save and close it. And it looks like this. Make it a little bit smaller. So we could change our grid right from here. We can show and hide it. Set it to 16th notes. See them right there? Whole notes, half notes. So we could change the grid right from this toolbar. And then we could turn on snapping from here. Let's set it to whole notes. Now if I drag this, it's going to snap to whole notes. Or half notes, or quarter notes, or anything else we choose. So it's a nice toolbar to have. And again, we can move this to the main toolbar. And it shows up over here. Or we can keep it floating or add it to the toolbar docker. Let's open toolbar one and put that in the docker as well. So right from here, you can switch back and forth. What we could also do is rename these toolbars. So let's go back and customize them. And let's change the name of this by hitting retitle to grid. And let's go to the other one and name it takes. And now we can see it a lot better. Open toolbar and then named right here. Takes or grid. And we can fold them by pulling them out like this and just dropping them. Now we could also create buttons to open our toolbars. So let's close these. Customize this one, go to Add, and type in Toolbar. So right from here, we could choose to open Toolbar 2 and Toolbar 1. They show up right here. Let's give them custom buttons. This one's for Takes. So we can use this button right here. And this one chooses our grid. So we'll type in grid, and we could choose this button right here. So now it's save and close it, and they show up right here. So if we want to work with takes, hit this button here, and the toolbar opens. Make it a bit smaller. So we could switch takes right from here. Or we could hit this button to adjust our grid. Set it to one, quarter note, turn off the snapping, turn it back on, hide the grid, show it. So you can see how flexible it really is. And there's no end to how many buttons you could put on each toolbar. So we go back into here, and let's just duplicate these. I'll just copy and paste them. Now they're all the same, but you just get an idea how many you can really add. Save it, close it. See, they all show up over here. So you can make this as big as you want and then open it up so you can see them all. So it's so flexible. And any action can have a button. And there's 16 different toolbars to choose from. And there's also eight different MIDI ones. So if we open the MIDI, right down here, there's MIDI toolbars, which you can switch the same way. And again, you can customize all of them, one through eight, and the default. So anyway, that's customizing the toolbars in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.